The Discourses of Epictetus, Book 1, Chapter 19 How We Should Behave to Tyrants If a man possesses any superiority or thinks that he does, when he does not, such a man, if he is uninstructed, will of necessity be puffed up through it. For instance, the tyrant says, I am the mass of all. And what can you do for me? Can you give me desire which shall have no hindrance? How can you? Have you the infallible power of avoiding what you would avoid? Have you the power of moving towards an object without error? And how do you possess this power? Come, when you are in a ship, do you trust to yourself or to the helmsman? And when you are in a chariot, to whom do you trust but to the driver? And how is it in all other arts just the same? And what then lies your power? All men pay respect to me. Well, I also pay respect to my platter, and I wash it and wipe it, and for the sake of my oil flask, I drive a peg into the wall. Well then, are these things superior to me? No, but they supply some of my wants, and for this reason I take care of them. Well, do I not attend to my ass? Do I not wash his feet? Do I not clean him? Do you not know that every man has regard to himself? and to you just the same as he has regard to his ass? For who has regard to you as a man? Show me. Who wishes to become like you? Who imitates you as he imitates Socrates? But I can cut off your head. You say right. I had forgotten that I must have regard to you, as I would to a fever in the bile, and raise an altar to you, as there is at Rome an altar to fever. What is it then that disturbs and terrifies the multitude? Is it the tyrant and his guards? By no means. I hope that it is not so. It is not possible that what is by nature free and can be disturbed by anything else or hindered by any other thing than by itself. But it is a man's own opinions which disturb him. For when the tyrant says to the man, I will change your leg, he who values his leg says, Do not have pity. But he who values his own will says, if it appears more advantageous to you, chain it. Do you not care? I do not care. I will show you that I am master. You cannot do that. Zeus has set me free. Do you think that he intended to allow his own son to be ashamed? But you are master of my carcass. Take it. So when you approach me, you have no regard to me? No, but I have regard to myself. And if you wish me to say that I have regard to you also... I tell you that I have the same regard to you that I have to my pipkin. This is not a perverse self-regard, for the animal is constituted as to do all things for itself. For even the sun does all things for itself, nay, even Zeus himself. But when he chooses to be the giver of rain, and the giver of fruits, and the false of gods and men, you see that he cannot obtain these functions and these names if he is not useful to man. And universally, he has made the nature of the rational animal such that, that it cannot obtain any of its own proper interests if it does not contribute something to the common interest. In this matter and sense, it is not unsociable for a man to do everything for the sake of himself. For what do you expect? That a man should neglect himself and his own interests? And how in that case can it be one and the same principle in all animals, the principle of attachment, regard to themselves? What then? When absurd notions about things independent of our will, as if they were good and or bad, lie at the bottom of our opinions, we must of necessity pay regard to tyrants. For I wish that men would pay regard to tyrants only, and not also to the bedchamber men. How is it that man becomes all at once wise when Caesar has made him superintendent of the closed stool? How is it that we say immediately, Felician spoke sensibly to me. I wish he were ejected from the bedchamber, that he might again appear to you to be a fool. Epaphrodus had a shoemaker whom he sold because he was good for nothing. This fellow, by some good luck, was brought by one of Caesar's men and became Caesar's shoemaker. You should have seen what respect Epaphrodus paid to him. How does the good Felician do, I pray? Then, if any of us ask, what is Master doing? The answer was, he is consulting about something with Felicion. Had he not sold the man as good for nothing? Who then made him wise all at once? This is an instance of valuing something else than the things which depend on the will. 
Has a man been exalted to the tribuneship? All who meet him offer their congratulations. One kisses his eyes, another the neck, and the slaves kiss his hands. He goes to his house. He finds torches lighted. He ascends the capital. He offers a sacrifice on the occasion. Now, whoever sacrificed for having had good desires, for having acted conformably to nature, for in fact, we thank the gods for those things which we place our good. A man was talking to me today about the priesthood of Augustus. I say to him, man, let the thing alone. You will spend much for no purpose. But he replies, those who draw up agreements will write my name. Do you then stand by those who read them and say to such persons, it is I whose name is written here? And if you can now be present on all such occasions, what will you do when you are dead? My name will remain. Write it on the stone and it will remain. But come, what remembrance of you will there be beyond Nicopolis? But I shall wear a crown of gold. If you desire a crown at all, take a crown of roses and put it on, for it will be more elegant in appearance.